Hi sisters, it's Melissa and I'm here with a new sister study video for um, 2019, first one. So um, this one is titled New Year's, New Mornings, and New Mercies. And uh, we're going to follow our same format of learning and sharing and praying and growing together. Um, I thought that one of the things that was missing from these videos was having some more sisters involved. So I asked uh, last week on Sunday at church, I asked Susan and Kathy and Stella um, if they had a word for the year. Some people have started doing that. Or if they have um, a goal or resolution for 2019 or something they were looking forward to this year. And I videoed it. I will um, share those little videos in on Facebook in the Facebook group and on the blog, but the sound didn't work well enough for me to be able to include it here. So I'm just gonna tell you what they said. Um, Susan said that her word for the year this year is abundance, and she's looking forward to seeing more of God's abundance um, around her and for her. And Kathy, her word for this year is declutter, and um, it was her word last year as well, but she's continuing on um, for this year with that. And then Stella said that um, she's been, there's something she's been praying for for 22 years that she is expecting God to answer about this year. And um, as well as she wants to use her gifts um, in the community for the homeless. And um, so I love how she's both looking to receive something from God and she's also looking for how she can share uh, blessings with others and um, I don't know about you but new at the beginning of a new year it seems like um, lots of us you know are excited about having a new um, a new calendar a brand new beginning that we can look forward to and um, I realized this year for the first time that New Year's might be one of my favorite holidays because it's it's an easy holiday there aren't lots of um, gatherings or expectations it's relaxing and I just love looking forward to a new year but what's interesting is that what today is January 13th so it's almost two weeks into this new year and just like when you get your car washed and then um, drive through a bunch of bugs on the highway or um, out in the country or anything or you know get it can get splashed they uh, a new car doesn't stay new or clean looking for very long and it seems like a brand new year doesn't feel new for very long either sometimes and um, what is so encouraging is that um, God's mercies are new for us every morning, not just on January 1st, but every day of the year. And whenever I think of new mornings and new mercies, I always think of Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, um, which I have here on the screen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And um, I love... I love this idea that God has new mercies available to me every day and um, that that they never end. Um, and one of the the Hebrew word there where it says that they're new every morning actually also it implies like they're fresh, which I like thinking of, you know, fresh bread or something that you know every morning God's mercies are freshly prepared for us. And um but if you, I, I wanted to take you a little bit uh, deeper into this um, this scripture passage and look kind of a little bit at the context of it. If you didn't take the time to um, to look in the Bible at where this these verses are coming from, you might just think that the author who wrote this is in a really lovely place and they just are enjoying God's mercies how beautiful they are. They're fresh, new every morning, and God's faithful. And you might not realize that, or you wouldn't realize unless you knew the story, the context, that um, this declaration is actually one that comes in the middle of a really super, super difficult time in the history of the Hebrew people. And 
Um, so we're going to back up a few verses. We're not going to read all of Lamentations 1 and 2 or the beginning of chapter 3 because we don't have that much time. But you could go back and look at that if you wanted to. And you would see that Lamentations was um, written during a time that the people of God um, were, the nation of Israel was under judgment um, because they had been following other gods. They had been worshiping idols and <coughs> um, had really had really stopped worshiping Yahweh, the one true God our, that, that we know as God. And um, God warned them for a long time. I'm not going to go into the whole history of it, but God warned them for like 40 years just through, through Jeremiah alone that judgment was going to come. And, um, but they didn't listen. They didn't repent. They didn't change their, their ways. And so God sent... Um, used the nation of Babylon and their king to basically take over um, Israel as well as the surrounding um, nations. And so many of the people of Israel were either killed in battles um, or they were taken as, it, as captives to, um, to Babylon. And... Um, that's where we get a lot of the stories uh, from the Old Testament that you may have heard of when you were kids about Daniel and the lion's den or um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were in the, the fiery furnace. And um, that's where those stories come from was when the Hebrew people were taken um, into to captivity. And, and so in the middle of this, Jerusalem has been taken. The, the temple of the Lord has been destroyed. It's a really... A horrible time for somebody like Jeremiah who loved the Lord and loved their loved Jerusalem. It was um, such a meaningful, it was home and it had been destroyed. And so in the middle of, in, in that context um, is where Jeremiah writes this book of Lamentations. And what he says, just a few verses backing up from what I just read is this, he says, I am deprived of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I said, my endurance has expired. I have lost all hope of del deliverance from the Lord. Remember my impoverished and homeless condition, which is a bitter poison. I continually think about this and I am depressed. Another translation of that, that last verse 20 there says, my soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me. Um, Jeremiah is in a really painful place. Um, he's exhausted. He's not feeling any peace. He can't remember what it means to be happy. Um, he's, it, his impoverished and homeless condition, you know, comes from their, their home has been destroyed. And <clears throat> they've been taken away from their homeland. And it's depressing when he thinks about it constantly because um, it's just, it's so... Um, traumatic really and but what we see is that Jeremiah doesn't stay in this place he acknowledges how horrible he feels and how hard the situation is and um but then he doesn't stay there so I wanted to look with you at how does he get out of this this being stuck remembering where he was and so the next verse says this but this I call to mind Therefore, I have hope. So if you do a word study on this verse, um, the red word there where it says, I call, is the word shuv, and it means to turn back or away, either literally or figuratively. So he's calling his mind to turn away from those things that he was fixated on. He was fixated on the... Um, how depressed he was and how discouraged he was, how much he missed his homeland and all the horrible things that had happened. And, but he's calling his mind to something else to, to stop just thinking about that. And um, what he's, and he's not just talking to his mind, um, just his thoughts, he's talking to his heart. So the word that's blue there is actually the word lab. And it means the heart, which can be, it's not just, it's kind of like how in English we talk about, uh, we have our, you know, the word for your physical heart. And then, but we also use that same word heart to mean um, 
the weight kind of our feelings and our um, emotions. And so it's the same way in Hebrew. Um, that word lave can mean your heart referring to your feelings or your will or your intellect. So it's translated as mind, calling something to mind, but it's not just it's not just a um, an intellectual thing. It's calling something to his heart. And because he does that, he ends up having hope. Um, the word, the pink word there is yahal, and it means to wait or to be patient or to hope. So he ends up finding hope because he's calling something to mind. So you can't just tell yourself, oh, I'm going to stop thinking about one thing, um, especially if your mind is stuck on it, without giving it something else to think about. So he's saying to his heart, stop, we're going to stop just dwelling on this and we're going to turn to something else. So let's look and see what he turns to instead, because he says, this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. And this is what the, this is. In Lamentations 3, 22 and 20, um, oh, I meant to say 3, 24, he says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new, or like I said, fresh every morning. Great, or also meaning abundant and multiplying, is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. So he's not just saying the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. It's not, he's not just saying that because it's how he always feels. That's what he's choosing to tell his mind and his heart to think about and to remember. And um, what's what I had not noticed at first when I started studying this, but then I noticed it last night and I was just so intrigued and I thought this was really cool that um, if you compare these two, I hope you can see this. Um, if you compare the two sections, they really kind of go together. So in the first part, he's saying, I'm deprived of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. Um, my endurance has expired. I've lost all hope of deliverance. Remember my impoverished and homeless condition, which is a bitter poison. My soul remembers it and is bowed down within me. So that's where he starts. But then when he makes the choice to call to mind um, the goodness of God, it switches to this other side. So now instead of being deprived of peace, he has hope. Instead of forgetting what happiness is, he's choosing to call to something to his, to his mind. And um, now as he does that, instead of his endurance expiring, he's focusing on the steadfast love of God that never ceases and never ends and his mercies that never come to an end. And instead of remembering his condition that is so discouraging, he's remembering God's faithfulness that is new every morning. So his focus shifts from his own circumstances and his own condition to God's promises and God's faithfulness. And the last part instead of his soul continually remembering and being focused on what's happening inside, his soul is declaring that God is his portion and that he will hope in him. And I just think what an amazing thing. And I'll tell you um, that I'll share with you. Um, yesterday, I was actually um, thinking about something and I, I was kind of stuck thinking about it. I, I need to go to the doctor and get something checked out. And I'm kind of dreading it. And so I'm putting it off. But last night I was um, I was just kind of in a funk. And one of the things that was causing it was just thinking about needing to go to the doctor. And um, <laughs> it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Don't worry about it. But I just still something I don't want to deal with. And um and then I remembered this verse. I remembered what it said about calling to mind um, the steadfast love of God. And so I, so I practiced. I took this verse to heart, and I, um, I chose to, instead of thinking about what I had been thinking about, I chose to think about the steadfast love of God and his mercies, how um, he's been merciful to me all my life. And 
his faith, he's been faithful to me all my life and how he's going to be faithful to me in this situation as well. And it made, it, it changed my, just like it does with, for Jeremiah in this passage, it, it changed my attitude for the rest of the evening. I was in a, in a different place um, emotionally than I had been before. And so I just want to encourage you that if you find yourself stuck um, this week, forgetting um, God and just pray that God will help you remember to, um, to focus on him and his faithfulness and to call that to your mind. So as we close this um, video, I just have a couple questions for you. I guess a lot of questions. You can pick which one you want to think about or answer. Um, do you have a word for the year? I'm curious if you do. Um, or do you have goals or resolutions for 2019? Um, what do you want to learn about this year? Is there anything that, um, that you want to learn about either through these videos or through the church or just in general? I'm curious what you are um, learning about. And um, is there anything that you need to turn your mind away from? Just like yesterday, I needed to take at that moment, turn my mind away from the worries. I still need to deal with the um, making the doctor's appointment that I need to make, but I needed to turn my mind away from the worrying part of it. And so is there anything you need to turn your mind away from? You can share that if you want, or just think about it with and talk to God about it. Um, but think about where is your focus and is your focus on um, right now on God and his faithfulness or on something else? and maybe God's inviting you to remember him rather than just the other things you might have been thinking about. So um, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to wrap this up. So God, thank you for your faithfulness, for your steadfast love, and for your mercies that are new every day, every morning for us, God, whether it's January 1st or January 13th or 14th or July um, or even December, God, your, your mercies are new for us every day. Your faithfulness can be counted on just like the rising sun. We know it's going to come up and um, pray that you will help us to seek you. Help us to learn the things you want us to learn as you teach us and um, help us to remember and not forget that you're with us and that you never fail. And I thank you for my sisters and pray you'll bless them this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, sisters, I love you all and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.